This is a case of modern machinery meets old. We're going to talk now about the 1000 kilometer review of the Carrera e-bikes. Poppet's just done over a thousand kilometers. And so have I. So we've had these bikes for about 18 months now. We bought them in May 2016. Okay. We've done a thousand kilometers in that time. And that's not bad actually, because I had a, well we effectively both had an eight month layup because I've had a case of vertigo, eight months, so <coughs> I suppose that means we've done a thousand kilometres in less than 12 months effective riding time. And because it's just clicked over a thousand kilometres, I thought we'd just uh, talk about how we find them and uh, their foibles, if any, and their good points and that kind of thing. So, first of all, these bikes are absolutely brilliant. They enable you to go places that if you had a normal bike you'd think, ah, oh, that's going to be too much hard work, I'm just not going to bother. You know, you look at a map and you see a couple of chevrons on the, on the old road and you think, ah, oh, it's going to be bloody steep. And then beyond that there's more chevrons, you think, ah, oh, I'm just going to end up pushing the bloody thing uphill all day, <laughs> getting hot and sweaty. Well, on these things, you still have to work at it, you still have to work, but you can do it, you know, they've got eight gears, they've got four different mode settings, you know, they just enable you to tackle those rides that you otherwise might think, ah, oh, just not bother, too much hard work. So, this is the ladies machine. It doesn't come with panniers or mud guards, it just comes as like a bare bones trekker. But uh, Poppet had mud guards and a back rack fitted there, so we could sling our panniers because, you know, we call them mules, and that's what they are little pack mules. <laughs> Enable us to go off road with our lunch and waterproofs and everything. And this, sir, is the gentleman's model, slightly different frame pattern. Again, it came as bare bones, but uh, I took my mud guards and the back rack off my previous push bicycle and they fitted on here all right and made it a good little uh, pack meal. So, as to the controls, you've got this thing here, you go plus or minus, that increases or reduces the power levels. On the screen, can you see those little animals? I'll click it down to zero, so that's no power. Next one, camel, or they call it eco mode. The next one is squirrel, where you get a bit more assistance yet. Then it's on, what's that, puma, where you can really lick along, you know. And then goat, which is supposed to put a little bit more torque down when you're, when you're climbing a really steep hill. Now, the way these bikes works, is that you can't just sit on them and press a button and go. You have to work. You pedal and the mechanism is like a torque reaction system. Whatever you're putting in in pedal push power, the electrics chips in a bit more. So it's like a torque amplifier effect, if you like. And depending which, which power mode you're in, it puts in more or less power to amplify the effort that you're already putting in. So, they're legally limited to 25 kilometers an hour, or is it 25.5? In any case, that works out about 15 miles per hour. And believe me, you know, when you're, when you're pedaling along a, a road at 15 miles per hour, that just feels like a good old lick on a bicycle. They've got disc brakes. Disc brakes front and disc brakes rear. On both versions.
It's just a party of walkers going by. And you know, I always thought, well, what the hell would you need disc brakes on a push bike for? But believe me, these, these brakes pin sharp, aren't they, Poppet? You know, they give you confidence. If you're going down a hill, you just know that these brakes are going to haul you in. And because you know the brakes are good, you can sort of, you know, freewheel at a downhill at a faster rate than you otherwise would if you had the old caliper brakes or something. Because you know these are just going to work proper. They've both got uh, suspension forks at the front, but it's a hard tail, tail rear. And uh, yeah, so, so madam, you've had your machine for a thousand kilometers. Have you anything to say? You know, they are good. They, oh, there you are, have it on tape. They're good. <laughs> <laughs> and what else is there to say? The battery. The battery, yes, good point. The battery. The battery pops out of its housing, just here. It's keyed, so it's locked in. You unlock it and just pop it out, and then you can take it inside and charge it. Or you can charge it in the bike, I believe. I've never done that myself. The battery is 11.6 amp hours. And uh, we, we, I think this is quite a common thing of these Carrera e-bikes, is just occasionally, and I don't know whether it's to do with the bumps or, personally, I think it's a little software glitch. Just occasionally, the whole system, the electric system, will boot down for, for, for no apparent reason. It, sometimes it can happen when you've parked up for a bit and just go to cycle away again. It'll just boot down and you've got to reset the battery and then re, and, and reinitiate the, the, uh, the, you know, the speedo head power control. And sometimes it just boots down two, three, four or five times in succession. And it's just a little quirk. Other days it'll be absolutely fine. Sometimes it'll be fine for days on end. You know, it's just a little quirk. And when I, when I can be able to get round to it, I'll, I'll experiment with putting a little bit of packing in the, in the battery holder cradle. Or putting a Velcro strap round it or something just to see if something makes a difference. But at the moment we just live with it, you know, if it, if it powers down, you just think, ah, oh, bloody hell, I've got to press the button again and reset it, you know, and off you go. Um, the, only, the only criticism, apart from that battery quibble, but I'm not knocking the bike, I still think it's blinking ace, I really do. The only other thing is, the bike comes with a very robust side stand, built in, and it's, you know, it's... it's very handy, you know, if you've got to stop to open a gate, you just flick the side stand down, open the gate and then wheel through. So. But you do have to be very careful to make sure that the bike is just parked pointing a little bit uphill and so that the gradient allows you to lean the bike properly onto the stand. Because uh, if you just park up on a level bit of ground, and there's a bit of wind, you might find the bike gets blown over or it starts sort of uh, rolling away or something, you know. But nevertheless, again, I'm not knocking the fact they're there because they're blinking handy. Just having that side stand, as long as you know it needs setting up right when you flick it down. So, I think that's it. No, it's not it. It's not. I've just remembered something in my pocket. Now, <coughs> because we both have the same bike together, we did a lot of uh, trial rides to see see what the range was in each mode and each setting and that kind of thing. So, empirically, we arrived at these results. We found that it makes a difference whether it's a warm day or cold, because on a warm day, the battery the ions and the electrons in the battery are, are that little bit more um, energetic. On a cold day, you know, you probably lose perhaps about 10 or 15% of your range just because it's blinking cold. Not only that, when it's cold, you dress up thicker, you know, you've got fleeces on and all that, so that increases the wind resistance and everything. So, let me see. I have got miles per battery in constant assist modes all right now if you're in eco mode just using it full time in eco mode not not using a 
any other power levels but just eco mode right from the get-go you'll get between 56 and 73 miles okay that's eco mode in city mode which is the squirrel symbol if you keep it constant in that you'll get between 49 and 62 miles in sport mode which the little symbol is a puma you'll get between 34 and 43 miles okay those are cold temperature values warm if it's warm in eco mode you'll get 68 to 88 kilometers in city mode which is for squirrel warm you'll get between 61 and 74 miles sport mode warm you'll get between 41 and 62 miles and obviously those ranges depend on how much personal effort you put into the into pedaling and what the terrain is whether you're against a headwind all the way or whether you've got a tailwind do you know what I mean there's still a lot of variables but you know the ranges are pretty good actually um, once in Wales North Wales hilly terrain over three days of riding I personally saw a hundred kilometers on the trip meter with 16 percent battery remaining so 100 kilometers maybe 65 miles you know but uh, you know I was, I was husbanding the energy levels trying to do as much pedaling with no assist as I could on that occasion so these are all real trials re real values that I've just uh, articulated there so that that was when the the bikes were new obviously the batteries will drop off in performance I imagine as the years go by but uh, there you go so here we are machinery modern that machinery old we're just here at the old gang mines complex in Swaledale incidentally at the uh, smelt mill so that's the career at e-bikes 18 months and 1000 kilometers on okay <laughs> I think there's just a few things I forgot on the thousand kilometer review of the uh, Carrera e-bikes so I'll just add them in now one thing is that because the, the motor hub is in the back wheel and it's just a little it's just one more thing to faff with if you get a puncture in the back wheel we both got slime in rear just for rear inner tubes okay just to guard against the possibility of puncture and that faff of disconnecting the electrics or whatever you know and the other thing I meant to say was we've done over a thousand kilometers on disc brakes the disc pads seem to be holding up all right so far I'll inspect them soon but you know you can expect to get at least a thousand kilometers out of them if not a lot more you know so I worried at first in case in case the old uh, disc pads might wear out down after a couple of hundred or something like that but that's not the case they're still going strong And that's where we did the bulk of the review earlier at the old gang smelt mill site. So yes, they're good little mules. Uh, they're not full-on mountain bikes, as you can see, but they're good enough for you know the roughy tufty of a bridle way general sort of track work as well as good for roads as well so a good sort of uh, multi-purpose machine they get us to places where you might not want to take a road bike yeah they facilitate and assist the object of exploring the wonderful British countryside I'm just gonna bring this uh, 
1000 km Carrera e-bike review to a close. Back in Swaledale I had speculated about disc pad longevity. I've got this instrument here, just a little 6 inch plastic ruler. It happens to be 2 millimeters thick. So I'm just going to have a look at the rear caliper here. Zoom in. There's the rear disc caliper. I'm just going to have a look at the remaining pad material. Like I say, that ruler is 2 mil thick. There's at least 2 mil of friction material left there. Now I don't know how thick the pads were when they were new. Let's say they were 3 mil, just as a guess. In which case, after a thousand kilometres, there's still two thirds remaining. Now it's the same at the front because I've measured it. I'm just going to swing around now and show you some written statistics that I made. This document I prepared after our findings when we first got the bikes doing different distance trials in different modes in different conditions and you can pause this footage if you want to read this in slow time on the video thanks for watching